Happy New Year, Inspirato Projector Radio. Your friend, man behind the machine. Couple of them. All right. Okay. So, ladies all right. and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Inspirato Projecto. Yes. K Chung Radio, Anchor FM. And we are we are talking to Chaz Ruiz, aka Baba Bui, and the transition between uh, he was in Fast Times and then also in Yachtly Crew. Now, did you have one foot on Fast Times in the same time you were in Yachtly Crew? Did, were, were you in both bands at some point? I was in both bands at uh, the same time. Yeah, in the beginning, because we only had a couple gigs in the beginning, mm-hmm. so it didn't interfere with Fast Times. Mm-hmm. And then it got busier and busier and busier, and I just couldn't do any of it. I can't do I can't do those gigs because we've been playing so much, you know. How how long were you in Fast Times for? I don't know, uh, four or five years, something like that. And you started that with Rob? No, I didn't start that. Rob oh. and Johnny started it. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. That's their band. And then and then Rob left to his country band. And then here we are today. And so with Fast Times, what I think is so interesting is that the places that we play with Yachtly Crew, I'll see Fast Times, I'll see your clone, I'll see your yeah. doppelganger up on those walls, because yeah. I had seen Fast Times on numerous occasions. Yeah. And uh, to now be in a band with you, and then I'm also <coughs> seeing the the shadow <coughs> version of yourself up by the carbon copy, you know, at these same venues that we're playing at, it's really quite uncanny. I mean, is that crazy to see you, your former band, you know, kind of haunting you, so to speak? Nah. No. That's not strange? No. No. Like, isn't it fascinating to some degree? It could be. Yeah. It could be fascinating if you really want it to be. Yeah. <laughs> it's not to me. So it's no big deal if you see a Fast Times poster on a wall. No, because I see them all the time. They've been around for a long time. I mean, yeah. Were they around before you joined? Oh yeah, they were. Yeah. I, oh. I wasn't okay. the original bass player of Fast Times. Wow. This goes back to a guy named Chuck. Way back, way back in the day. And then he handed the uh, baton to you. Yeah, to me. Handed yeah. the torch to you. And then now I'm in Yachty Crew. Incredible. Did you get to pick your character in the band? Or was there always uh, think, a Nikki Six kind of guy? I think I kind of made that up. Like I said, I'll be Nikki Six because I can pull that off. What was the guy before? What was Char? Would you say he was Charles? Devo? Oh, oh, okay, okay. And then Rob became Devo. Yeah, he was Devo. Wow. It's like yeah, a super did you guys team. Start Fast Times band, or did you join it after? Johnny and Rob started. Okay. And. And then uh, I, and then Rob left, and then I joined, and then Rob left shortly after that. Oh, really? Because he got tired of playing in Fast Times. How he had, long was he in it? He liked his country band at the time. Uh, he was in it for, I don't, I don't even know, 10 years, 15 years, something like that. Oh, that's a long time. Yeah, a long time. I was only in it for like the last five or six years, I think. Something like that. Seven years. Time moves by so quickly, yeah. What was the name of that place? It was called like Lunar or something. It was like in Santa Monica. Where'd you guys? Lunar. What, what were some of the places you played like in the Santa Monica area? Oh, we played at. Uh, There's a place and it switched names. V Lounge. V Lounge? V Lounge. V Lounge. On Wilshire. I saw you guys play at Busby's uh, East. Yeah. On Wilshire. Yeah, yeah, that's the one we played. Oh, cool. I saw you. Uh, a couple times there. You did? Yeah. When? And that was in the beginning when he this first like joined Yachtly Crew? 2008 or, or 2009. So you saw us before you, I even met you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we used to play there a bunch of times. It actually might have even been before you were in the band. Could be. That's crazy. But I, Rob was definitely in the band. Whoa. And little did you realize that Rob being in that band would one day be in the band that you'd be in. That's right. God, you know that's what that's called? <laughs> Please tell us. Absolutely. Synchrendipity. It's synchrendipity. Synchrendipitous. It's synchrendipitous, indeed. <laughs> it's, it's synchrendipitous. That's a good phrase, actually. <clears throat> synchrendipitous. <laughs> yeah, so it's, a, you know, it's a big incestual pool of people. Yeah. We've all played with each other 
<laughs> yeah, I'm starting to see more and more of these folks who have all. It's great to hear these stories of how everybody's worked with each other. There's a lot of other bands that have branched out on other members in past times. Wow. That'd be fun to like we do see. A family tree. The, 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 I would love to see the family tree. We should make one. There's something I saw a long time ago. It was like a family tree of like, uh, I think it was for Andy Warhol and, and Lou Reed and Velvet Underground and, you know, just all the different things that stemmed off of that. And there's yeah. another thing with like 80s bands or something. And so it was just fascinating to see who joined what with who and how they all came together. Yeah. But I've pretty much always been in a band with Rob. And if Rob wasn't playing drums, Birdo was playing drums. But most of the time it was Oh, Rob. Birdo played in Rio on a couple occasions. Played in a couple of my bands. So, wow, that's so incredible. Yeah, he would fill in for Rob. Does he have his own band? Who? Birdo. Birdo's in the long run now. Oh, I, I don't think I've heard of that one. He's the drummer of the long run, the Eagles tribute band. Oh, okay. What's up, bro? Hey, man. Hey. Oh, hey. Eddie, is that, so Eddie works with? Eddie works with the long run. Oh, okay, now the connections are being made. Hey, man. This is good. Okay, so... This is around a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I can't wait to see Eddie again. Hey man. You gonna buy pizza later? Hey, I'm hey. standing under the street lamp. Hey I man. look like Mexican James Dean. Why don't you grab that weed over there and bring it over here? And I'll roll us a joint. Oh my God. <laughs> it was so funny. the gas lamp? He was supposed to be buying her from... It was so funny seeing him under that street light at, at night. He's like, quick, take a... Take a picture. I'm the Mexican James Dean. <laughs> like Take a you, picture. Sounds like you say, huh? Hurry up, man. Come on. Right, look at right here with my arms crossed. <laughs> yeah. You know, I got yeah. and I got the cigarette hey. in my mouth right here. So hey. take a it's picture. A, I got a picture. Vicious. I'm Eddie Vicious. Oh He's like a teddy bear, man. Yeah, I love it. I'm Eddie Vicious. I, I know, he looks so intimidating. He always walks around with his ripped uh, arm shirt. He's got his... Oh, yeah, yeah, on. yeah. He's all his shirts. Oh, he's oh my black. God. It'd be so funny to be so great to see him in one of those Yachtly Crew crew shirts. Characters. I know, we're surrounded by characters. We've been friends for a long time, man. You know, third grade, man. Come on. It's incredible you guys have known each other since third grade. And Dan the Man. uh, Dan the Man. played with us. Oh, oh. Admiral or Lieutenant Dan. Oh, oh, oh. It's Stillwater. Yeah. I met him in fourth grade, and we're still friends. Did he, did he know uh, Eddie as well? They've met. They've I've, oh I've introduced God. him. Oh We've my God! We had lunch God. together. Dude. Yes. That's amazing. That's such a rarity. Yeah, I stay friends with my good friends forever. You know what I mean? A lot of friends come and go, acquaintances. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you know who your true friends are when you stay friends that long. Oh yeah. Wow. Can That's incredible. Say, can you say that you have a friend from the second grade? I got a friend from, oh, yeah, 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 I do, I do. Yeah. I keep, you know, okay. loose tabs on them. I got a couple that I keep loose tabs on. Um, there's one friend in particular, Eric Kleinberg, that I've, you know, have a really good, strong connection with. He's like a, a brother to me. Pee? Oh, we gotta find, we gotta, we gotta find a place to. Gentlemen, you are reached. Inspirado Projecto. Ecto, 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 ecto. This has been another Traveling interview session. More later. I do want you to want me. I do need you to need me. Idea for... Characters, yeah, uh, just a group of people who are always just laughing. Yes, they could be telling jokes. However, it seems like there's always some unmentioned humor, some joke that's going on that's just beneath the surface that everyone, everyone kind of knows about. I'm editing a wedding video right now, and it just starts right off with these people just smiling and laughing and stuff, and I'm going, what are they laughing about? Like, what's the secret thing? Like, what is it? Um,
Maybe, maybe those characters are the only ones in the movie. The big secret was that the fact, oh, maybe the big secret is the idea that they knew that they were in a movie the whole time. They knew that they were being watched the whole time. But everyone else didn't know it. They're the only ones who were aware of an audience. Of them being viewed. It's that same sort of nervous laughter that comes from people who realize a camera is on them. Or they're being, you know, video recorded. They suddenly... They suddenly get that nervous, that sort of nervous laughter. So the whole movie, they're not ta at all talking about it. They never once mention the fact that there is an audience watching the very movie. And maybe those people who are laughing, they're the most spiritual. We always see them, you know, involved with synchronicities. Um, talking about things that they want, that they intend. We see them happen for them. Um, it's great because, you know, you want to see a character succeed in a movie. So, we as the audience, we want to see the character succeed in the movie. That's the same thing as the, the higher mind anyway. It wants to see it succeed. I mean, it's like we, there's this energy. Go ahead and use it. So, everything turns out good for those smiling people and those laughing people until they describe to the people in the movie that they're being watched. Maybe, maybe finally they describe it to the people in the movie that they're being watched. Nobody in the movie deserves it. Oh god, that's great. Interesting. Wow. And then meanwhile, the people in the movie who are laughing like the core insiders of knowledge, maybe all of the other characters in their lives represent certain aspects about them so we get to actually see how those other people that are in their lives reflect those aspects very interesting mm. Encountering sound check at Moonshine Beach with Philly Ocean. Start with that. Let me get a percussion vocal. Control the send on that, do you? No. Okay. No, no, I'm just having to give it a lot of gain. It sounds fine. I was just curious. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm pushing it pretty hard. I mean, it doesn't sound. It doesn't sound like it's. We're podcasting. Podcasting. Podcasting here. We got podcasting. This is the real deal, ladies and gentlemen. Behind the scenes of a yachty crew sound check. The real deal. 
Welcome to Stony Shores Liquor Closet. No, because it doesn't sound like the audio Open quality bar is tonight. getting really fucked with it all. It's just... Yeah, yeah. Usually it seems like it's pretty hot. Like, I don't know. It sounds fine. I mean, as long as it sounds... Yeah. You can hear I'll say we on something tonight, so it's going to be... Yeah, yeah, it's going to be fine. Okay. Sure, two. All right, cool. Let's go back through new monitors. I'm going to kill this mic so you guys aren't here in the house, so you'll just have to listen to me yell at him. with more Yachtly Crew shenanigans later on Inspirado Projecto. Mr. Stony Shores, thank you so much. Very sweet. I appreciate that. We're going to play that on the show. I think it's really funny. I love it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. You guys are great. And um, hopefully we'll be talking much more down the road about uh, possibly getting you guys booked on certain venues um yeah we need to talk about that stony so uh we will be in touch all right talk to you soon thanks again hey everybody gather around want to hear the inspirado hotline number yeah all right goes a little bit like this five six one two zero three nine one seven nine oh Six one two zero three nine one seven nine. Say, I got an idea. How about you try it? Sounds great. Okay, here we go. Five six one two zero three nine one seven nine. That sounds great. Five six one. That sounds awesome. Five six one two zero three nine one seven niner. Jesus, hello. Okay, you don't need to rate my performance because my performance is the best performance in the whole damn world after yours. Um, ha ha ha. Anyway, I have a, a favor to ask. So it's 8.16, and if you guys still at Shade's house, can you please, um, maybe you've seen it, or uh, maybe you guys have it already, a case, my uh, transparent plastic case with the brushes. You've seen, it, uh, you've seen me using it. So if you guys have access to your house, and if you can find it, can you please take it with you? So next time I'll, we will be working, I can pick it up from uh, you or from Mike. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to text you and the guys. Uh, and, well, I hope today went well. And uh, see you soon. Bye. I just had this, had this idea. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I just had this idea about a guy who... Um, he, you know, maybe he thinks that he's got a pretty good percussion for a drum, for a, a heartbeat, like this. And what he does is he hooks up an amplifier to his heart. So every time he has a heartbeat, it, it, uh, it, it blasts out there to the populace, just like this. Time is now 9.04 p.m. We're here in the green room of Moonshine Beach for tonight's Yachtly Cruise show. We're going to be playing at 10 p.m. sharp. So we have almost an hour left. We just had a hearty meal, a hearty drink, 
the Texas meal. And um, what kind of food did you have, Paulie? I had a uh, CJ burger. And what was that concocted? What was that created with? Hamber of? Hamburger, um, delicious tomatoes, lettuce, um, some kind of sauce. I don't know what it was, but it was a delicious mm. meat patty. Oh, it was so good. It was a... It was the perfect, perfect meal. Just what I was looking for. Oh, yeah. And then what kind of liquid beverage did they give you? Um, I ordered the Texas meal. And this, I'm enjoying it right now. It's quite delicious. I don't know. It's a ginger beer. And, um, I got to be careful because it has tequila in it. Mm. But it's, uh, it's very tasty. Very, very refreshing. So that's what they were saying was makes, makes the, uh, what is it, the other mule different from the Texas mule. Yes. Is um, the tequila. The tequila, yep. And normally it's what? Um, usually I think it's like vodka. Uh-huh. Do you taste the difference in it? Um, oh yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah. A little bit of more of a... Kick. Hot, yeah, kick. You know, like a mule. Yeah, it kicks you just like the mule. Yep. A, a, uh, a Mexican mule, apparently. Um, Yes. Because the other one, what's the other one called? The, what's the other one? Something mule. Um, sure Moscow mule. Moscow mule. The other one's from Moscow. This one's from Texas. Okay, now I get it. Now I get it. Now I get it. Now I get it. Moscow mule. Russian. Vodka. Texas mule. They don't make tequila. Do they make tequila in Texas? Um, I'm not sure. If it comes from Mexico, then they should call it the Mexican mule. Mexican mule, yes. Or the Mexican burro. 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 Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who are studying mixology, put that one in the books. Texas mule has tequila. It's got a kick. Uh... I noticed that when times in the past when I drank tequila, I don't know what it is, but I find myself getting irritated with stuff or like angry with stuff. I I don't know why that is. Some something about something about the tequila. I had a friend who uh, we go out to the bars and. I remember he said, uh, they won't give me tequila here. And I said, why? And he said, well, I've been kicked out of here on an, a couple of occasions uh, because I drank tequila. I drank too much tequila. And he's like, can you please go get me a shot? Just hide it. Don't, don't, let him, don't let the bartender see that you're giving it to me. And I was with him and a couple other people. And... I said, okay, yeah, no problem. Well, he turned in, he did turn into a jerk. You know, normally he's a nice guy. But he kind of turned into a jerk when he drank that tequila. And he was just flicking people off. Left and right. And I wrote a story about a uh, song about the guy called Soko Story it was going to be Tequila Story but I thought Soko Story kind of had a good sound to it so it's based on him but instead of someone instead of a but a friend who you know turns into kind of a jerk when drinking too much tequila it's just too much southern when they drink too much southern comfort they turn into this different, you know, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind of thing. And uh, there have been those times where I've drank tequila and I found myself being a little bit, <laughs> being a little bit, uh, a little bit of a jerk. Wait, we could go out this door? Can we go out this door? Here we go. Here we go. 
You're coming with us, Polly Shores and me. It's getting a little cold out there in the uh, San Diego, the San Diego night. <coughs> How does your deal go, Mr. David Bowie? Uh, it is wonderful. I have one of the nicest families. They're from Iowa. Good. They have four little ch- four children from ages uh, eight, 17 months to 11 years old. And they live in a tiny, cramped, little three-bedroom home. And I'm going to help them buy a six-bedroom home in Chatsworth Cheers. with a swimming pool, uh, sport court, tennis courts across the street, and their kids play tennis. you got to be kidding me. It's like the world's completely I melded. I love it. It's unbelievable. And you're going to help bring this I'm putting the whole deal true. together, and they're putting all their trust in me, and I'm going to engineer the deal and I'm make it so right. I'm so proud of you. Oh, Thank that you. is so kick-ass, These are man. the people that make me happiest. Yeah. When, when dealing with real estate, when you find people like this, <laughs> and you can help somebody who desperately needs help. Oh. Paul, you think your house is a wreck with two kids? Four kids in a house that's a tenth of the size of where you live, and it is complete mayhem. Whoa. And they are completely out. He's a doctor. She's a kindergarten teacher uh, from so Iowa. Give some space, I'm going to give some... them a mansion, and oh they are so god. stoked. Oh my god, that's so great! I got to them hear. alone and everything. I oh already got gosh. them qualified. They're done. Wow, They're done, baby. Now dude, just, great now job! I just got to sell their house for top dollar, and if I can get six hundred for them, we're done. So, wow! It's a beautiful thing. Oh, I'm already putting out. the. It I'm is a beautiful thing. Out. Tell all your friends. Oh yeah, David David Spangler. He will he will take care of your real estate out here in California. He is the guy. He's the go-to. All right, folks. Oh, the uh, the uh, circular stairwell is off bounds tonight off bounds we already have people here tonight wearing wearing the uh wearing the uh captain's hats we already see it happening it's very exciting very exciting captain's hats captain's hats being worn we gotta go down this ways We are. Uh, we'll be back. We'll be back with more. We'll be back up. We'll be back with more updates later. Be careful when you step outside from your favorite bar at night. You seem to have a very wide. Tendency to start drunken fights. Don't give me that so cold story again. Don't give me that so cold story again. I don't like sticking up for you, explaining why. You came unglued, apologizing for the bottle you threw, paying for your unpaid food. Don't give me that so cold story again. Don't give me that so cold story again. this out I'm still trying I'm getting my doubts do I want to still be a friend be there till the destined end don't give me that so cold story again don't give me that so cold story again Don't 
tell me that so cold story again. Okay, it began on Garnet and Ooh, Everett. Tell us more. On the evening of Thursday, January Ooh. the 24th. Yes, not long far behind the full Stony wolf Shores blood and, lunar moon. And David Bowie and oh, Polly yeah. Shores were oh, on the yeah. corner of Garnet and Everett. Yes, and what did they see? In San Diego, California. What was there, to their surprise? There were plenty of people that were out for a good time. Absolutely. What you were they wearing tell. mostly? You could tell by the captain's hats and, yeah. and yacht attire. Uh-huh. What kind of things do we hear them saying? Boat shoes. Yeah, they said boat shoes a lot. Uh, I keep forgetting we're Ooh. not in love anymore. Mm-hmm. We heard a lot of that kind of talk. If you like pina coladas. Yeah, and getting caught in the rain even. Um, whoa. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <coughs> we're never going to dance again. Never going to dance again. I've got no rhythm. Ain't got no rhythm now. I've played the solo once before. He did it. I jumped in, I hit the floor. He hit the floor. I broke my calcaneus real it's bad. It's true now. And Christian drove me to the hospital. I fucking saw that. Then I said, I'll never play in Yali Oh, again. no. But I found a way, because that's how I am playing. That's what it did. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's what, what it singing? did. What song are we singing? Killers Whispers. I'm imagining the smoke. I like when the smoke just. But it gets in my keys really and makes my saxophone go flat. Oh, no, really? Yeah, so whenever he makes the smoke. Whoa, now that's a little fun flat. fact that nobody even knew. Tell yeah. us more. Well, the smoke fills up the holes in my saxophone, really? and so it covers up, it changes the tuning, and it makes it all go out of, like, wonky wonk. Like, the keys are closed, but they're not meant to be. They're just filled with, uh, with, with smoke from the fog machine. Fog, rather. Water vapor. So she, so her holes got filled up with too much smoke. Water vapors. And she got out of tune. One would think that with that kind of, with the, that kind of lubrication, that the, the notes could just kind of slide along much easier. No, it easier. like fills it up like it's muted, like it's in water. Really? Like, like a you. gurgling? Like a, oh, you know what I'm thinking yeah. about? It's like uh, the wheezing, it's wheezing like in a lung. It's to talk underwater, and it sounds like, oh. that's what it sounds like. Oh, okay, that makes sense, that makes sense. What do you, what do, you do to term. ensure that it's... Uh, like, are, are there things yet invented? I'd like to imagine there's something that's invented that could just, you know, some kind of thing you could put in there that just eats up all the moisture, so to speak. Oh, like some a fan? Sp- Perhaps a fan. Yeah. Perhaps a fan. But if I play into a fan, that messes up my sound, too. So I, I mean, just have to step away from the smoke. Just not be anywhere near it. Yeah. That's the easiest solution. Well, that combined with hot air... You know, the hot air that's in there, I, I'm sure that creates moisture. Uh, oh, yes, for sure. Plenty of hot air. There's got to be some kind of invention. So when you put the... Okay, so you got have you have like this uh, handkerchief that goes in there. Yes. Does that help with the, like, kind of bringing in the moisture? Uh, no, it probably keeps the, the instrument warm for some for a little bit longer, but I use it mainly for cleaning out the moisture after I play. It's uh, it's like um, it's got a weight on it, and you pull it through, and like the silk swab absorbs all the moisture. You like, like those s- people when they pull like a shoelace from their through their mouth and through their nasal cavity, and they go. Yeah, like a noodle. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah a noodle. Yeah, spaghetti noodles. So the, really that's well the that. kind of the same concept yep. from the hole all the way yep. through the mouth. Yep. It's kind of like the snake. It's kind of like you you get like exactly. <laughs> yep. And so when you do that. Um, God, I'd, I'd love to believe that just sort of like a sh- what do they call them chamois like yeah. a chamois it absorbs yeah. all that moisture I'd like to think that there's something like that for the saxophone yeah there is oh and you have something of that kind of nature yeah oh wait I think we enter here right or no yeah I'm just gonna throw this away oh yeah we already see people with the with the hats I love it I love it I love it they're coming th- up everywhere I, my, my, I just absolutely love this aspect of you know becoming friends with these wonderful people who are willing to come out and play along and join in and be a part of the fun be a part of the madness um, 
you know, just fun-loving folks, fun-loving individuals. This might be found poetry. I just found something on the ground. Someone's receipt. Uh, it says, thanks, fam. Heart, Kevin. Uh, it's for $43.10. That is a receipt I just found on the ground. That is found poetry. There's scooters out here. Have you ever ridden one of these scooters? No, not since I broke my foot. Oh, have you been very cautious? Very, very, very cautious. Uh, are there ever times where you bend certain ways and you're like, yeah, and then you get a certain, it surprises you, you're like, whoa, that's... All the time. Know, little... Yeah, what, what, it, during what aspects? <laughs> Pretty much all the time. Anytime really? I, I mean, anytime I step on it, yep. It looks like it's healing up real well, man. The way that you walk, like you, you it will look, will look like you're just, it's natural. Like you're natural with it now at this point. I mean, I think you're doing a great job. Thank you, Stoney. Thank you very much. What are you doing? Where are you going? I'm going to get a beer. Uh-oh. Okay, we'll talk more uh, later on Inspirato Projecto. Here's your fun fact. Did you know that if you reduced your daily calorie intake by 25%, it leads to improved mood, reduced tension, and a higher sex drive? Stay tuned to Inspirato Projecto for more fun facts. Here's a little story I meant to mention. While I was there with Phil and Noel the other day, you can hear our conversation on the podcast. We we uh, were at this wine bar, and at 5:30 they got half off uh, appetizers and half off wine. And Phil Donlin has become quite a wine connoisseur. So while we were there, this couple sits down. Off to my left. And it's like a big square. We're around a big square. And we're, we're the first ones there. And then people start slowly filtering in. And there's this couple there. And there's this guy. And he looked so familiar to me. And I was trying to place these different templates over him in different areas of my life where I might have possibly met him. Did I meet him while I was doing extra work? Did I meet him in an acting class? Did I meet him while I was in Columbia College? Was, when, maybe when I was at COD? Is this someone that I met at a party? He was this older fella. And I felt like he was somehow connected with Dave Uchansky, who I still got to talk to about that. I got to ask him about this. Because it's, it's intriguing when you come across people who you think, you know, they're familiar to you. And you know that you've seen them before. And you can't place where. So there's this, there's, there's like, there's a bridge, but not one that you can actually put a finger on. You know there's a connection there. But you don't know how you're supposed to connect to that person. I didn't know how I was... Uh, did I act with that guy in a scene? Like, I f felt like... Um, isn't that interesting? Because it was so anyway, I asked him, I said, Hey man, you look familiar to me, how do I know you? I said, do I, do I know you from somewhere? And he's like, no, I don't think so. And I said, you've got a doppelganger out there who looks just like you, who I met somewhere. And I just cannot remember how I met that doppelganger of yours. So it's interesting how people in our lives, they become whatever it is that we're defining them, the, you know, the importance and the belief systems that we have behind that definition, behind why we choose to define folks in those particular categories. Like, 
there was no thumbprint, there was no fingerprint to, there was a, it was like, how do I explain it? Have there been people like that, that you've come across? I'm sure there has. And have you, this is the other thing is, I'm curious about, have you confronted them, so to speak? Have you said something to them? Had, have you been willing to embarrass yourself? Some folks might define that act as embarrassing or putting themselves out there. There's some risk involved. Oh, no, that's weird. Oh, no, that's creepy. Why is that the stance that is taken a lot of times? Why is it creepy? Why is it weird? Why is it weird? I'd love to know the reasons why. Because then we can go, and then we can go, okay, Where's where does the resistance where's the resistance in there and it, and is that resistance worth holding on to how much how much value does that resistance hold how much value is there it's like the monkey you've ever seen the uh, there's there's a little it's a sound of my toenails this is the sound of my uh that's the sound of my ah here we go this is the sound of my very 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 strong toenails. How about that? Very strong toenails. This is the sound of my very, very strong toenails. This is the sound of my very, very strong toenails. So there's that monkey, and they reach their hand into this sort of enclosed sort of area reaches his hand in there and when he grabs grabs the food he can't uh, he can't pull it back through the hole so he's got to let go of the food there's there's sort of like this value now attached to it it's like what's worth more what's in my hand or my hand <laughs> what's worth more what's in my hand or my hand what's worth more my hand or my soul Huh. What's more important? What's now or what's to come? There's that gamble. We got that gamble mentality. We're the best we're the best gamble money can buy. <laughs> we are the best gamble money can buy. And even what's the, what what would I like to supplement that with? It's value it's more valuable than what money can buy. It's more valuable than what money can buy. Wowzers. How interesting is that, you know, when you think about that, this moment to moment is so important. We're the only ones who have to walk around and be entertained by this particular moment, by this being that we are tied up with in this moment in time, that we are intrinsically connected with. This being, this being, why do so many, why do so many of us choose to be disgusted by this being that we're hanging out with? Isn't that interesting? So this is the this is the vehicle. Vehicle. This is the vehicle we're driving around in. Vehicle. Hello, I'm driving a brand new vehicle. This is what I'm doing right now. Driving a brand new vehicle. Vehicle. So this is the vehicle that we're driving around. And so, 
we're putting the stamp of approval. We're the author as to whether we're enjoying this moment right now. And if not, where does that, what is that not? Where is that not? If not, where is the not? Ooh, ooh, there's a t-shirt idea. If not, where is the not? Where's the not? Wow, that's, that's two things. That's three things in one. If not, N-O-T, where is the not? See, now that's applied to the idea if you're not having fun. If not, where is the not, K-N-O-T, that you must untie? Also, <laughs> what's beautifully wrapped up within that is the knot of, like, a ship sailing. The knot. How many knots are we driving? How many knots are we driving? So you go towards... So it's both go to where you're tied up and run and go with it and r sail. Where's the knot? Untie the knot. Untie the N-O-T so you can sail. Trade knots for knots. Interesting. Trading knot, trading knots for knots. <laughs> uh, ooh, knot. Knot. N a u g h t and n a u t. This is why there's such a fun play on words. Naughty and naughty. N a u g h t y and n a u t i. Naughty. Naughty, K N O T T Y. Naughty, naughty. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Naughty, naughty. Interesting. Interesting. Nautical. Nautical. Astronautical. Astronauty. That could be a that could be a, a series of uh, cosmic porn. Astronauty. <laughs> it's probably already out there. This is one of those. This is probably one of those moments of uh, accidentally predicting the past. I tend to do that. I tend to predict the past or predict the, accidentally predict the present. <laughs> I'm, I I accidentally and magically predict the present. Oh my god. The pre-scent, isn't that interesting? The pre-scent. Pre-scent. So it was sent already, but it was before it was sent. So it's the pre-scent. It's the now. The present. Scent. Ent. Ent. Ent for entertainment. Ooh, pres presentertainment. Now that's another good, that's a good another title for something. Put the, write that down. Presentertainment. That's out there, I bet. Presentertainment. Presentertainment. We present you the best presentertainment available now and forevermore. Turn into you now. Presentertainment. <laughs> Presentertainment now. That was great. The sound of the engine revving back out there in yonder. Wow. Press Entertainment presents. <laughs> uh, we shall press entertain you. Presentimentality. Ooh, presentimentality. Many of you are very, pre you know, there's a lot of presentimentality involved. <laughs> Being sent sentimental about the present. Wow. Is that being is that being sentimental in the present? Because we already got sentimental. Sent, like sent. Sent, S-E-N-T, and also S-C-E-N-T. Present. Presentertainment. Presentertainment. Present. Sense. Presentertainment. Presents. Present, present. President, present, 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 president, present. Presidents, president, precedents, president, precedent. Hello, I am presently president, president. 
I set the president. I set the precedence for this presidency. <laughs> Present, presentency, presentency. My presidency is is prevalent, prevalently based on present, presency, presency. Let's. It's time to get very present now with the president. Get present with the president. Presency, president, presency. <laughs> So that's a lot to think about, isn't it? The idea that you used to have this electrical bond, so to speak, with a particular person due to whatever particular circumstance. It's a camaraderie. Oh, we went through an acting class together. We were in those scenes together. We had to do this assignment together. We were in there studying together. There's a tie that binds. It's a mental, hey, remember in sixth grade when we worked on that science project to the, together? Bam, there's a tie that binds. That might be just be enough to hold the friendship together maybe Matt, that's an interesting idea for a movie there, there there's a tie that binds it's it's the, maybe these kids they won this huge like the state science fair project thing and bam there's probably a lot of movies about that that's okay that's okay and if there aren't there will be we have enough examples now brewing about where you just go, yeah, that's that's gonna happen. Now, now, see, now at this point, all all it takes is just finding the team that is willing to dream along with you, and also has the resources to be able to help take take you know bring that dream into fruition. It's the A team. See, serendipity, baby. The universe knows. That punctuation mark would not have been there had I not said that. Isn't that interesting? Which came first, chicken or the egg? Which came first, chicken or the egg? I said, which came first, which came first, which came first, which came first? The witch came first. Oh boy, the witch came first. Chicken or the egg? The witch came first. Wait. The witch, which, the witch came first chicken or the egg wow the witch the witch witch whoa the sandwich witch maybe she turns you into a sandwich wow I just imagined uh, like a set that they they have you sign a contract like okay so they're the you always see these people I want to kill myself I want to kill myself I want to kill myself okay guess what we are going to be your Dr. Kevorkian we will be the sandwich witch what what's that if you truly want to kill yourself here sign this contract and they make it deep because it's not the point of really actually wanting to do what I'm about to tell you right now it's that's not that does not lie that's not the mission. The mission is to try to do whatever you can in your power to stop these people from going through with this weird, absurd idea. The absurd idea is this. Instead of you killing yourself, we turn you into a sandwich, and then you get eaten by, you know, your favorite celebrity, let's say. Something weird like that. We ensure that you will be eaten by your favorite celebrity. Wouldn't that be interesting? So you got this whole team of people who are planting these sandwiches near these, near these uh, celebrities. It takes a lot of palm grease, and if you know what I mean, you got to tip a hell of a lot of people. You got to make sure that when that sandwich is made, you know that sandwich is made. So maybe they don't. Maybe it's a sandwich that just doesn't. It does. Maybe it does rot. Maybe there's a time limit on it. Because imagine, as soon as you get turned into that sandwich, bam. So. Hmm. So this is the thing. To deter a person from killing themselves, um, they sign over their, t you know, this is the thing. You sign over all of your social media passwords. We now take control of it. You know, we will, con we will take control of all of it. You will give us files to all of your personal 
journals, information, Facebook passwords. We will continue your life on, we will continue on your life. Now, I can imagine that there's some sort of like marketing firm or some kind of company that ends up is paying for this sort of service where they're able to sort of like utilize that instead of coming up with a fake um, account and building up from, you know, reverse engineering it, they're just using something that someone's just out there already. You know? Wow. Maybe if there's something, ooh, maybe a service, they're like, okay, hey, do you want to delete your social networking accounts forever and go off the grid? Do you want us to take care of your social networking life while you're gone? We will do that. We will do that. We handle it all. Maybe there's a special service where it's like... Hmm. Maybe it encrypts the password in some way, so... Like when the people utilize it when you're gone... It's not the real password. It somehow is. It somehow links through there, but it's not... You know, it's a different one. So once, once their job is done, anyway, the whole idea would be to, to, to really make this contract so crazy and ridiculous. Like your, your identity will not be limited to, you know, um, uh, record deals, movie, you know, cause at that point you'll be able to create their face. You scan their face, all these multiple photographs, all of your, your all of your life is now our property. <clears throat> so to speak, <clears throat> all of your photos. So you scan those. Now you can do that software where they're, where they're talking. Um, they can send, you know, Skype things. They'll be able to recreate the voice, all this stuff. That's an interesting movie. Maybe someone who like starts noticing that this particular account they've been following and who was a good friend of theirs now suddenly like the avatar, it all just starts just outputting, like there's no more sort of human looking things on their Facebook page, Twitter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, which mental note to myself, I must investigate. Uh, if any of you have ideas for other social networks that are just starting out, please Email me at inspiratoprojecto at gmail.com. Let me know about this. Also, you can also call in 561. Uh, you know, the toll, the, the, the hotline, the hotline number. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why would I not tell you that right now? See, why would I be a jerk about that? I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just too lazy. I'm just too lazy to look into my Rolodex. I'm just too darn lazy to look into my Rolodex right now. I'm supposed to be editing wedding videos. That's what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Just taking a little bit of a break. They haven't gotten. To, they have not even gotten to the vows yet. There's people are still arriving, so I got to go through that. So I just imagine someone, they'd suddenly just suspiciously, they just start seeing like only like bit strips type stuff or uh, platagon, you know, it's just only stuff that's just not human. And so this person starts investigating more and more and more. Now it turns out they end up finding out that there was this service behind, you know, the past few months, years, maybe years, years. Uh, it turns out where that person had died. So, there you have it. There you have it. If you get on a winning streak and you're, you're creating things in a bubble and then they work, 
well, then you you want to take all the credit yeah. for it. Yeah. You forget all the thousand hours in the bedroom that you listen to Jimi Hendrix or, yeah. you know, Bauhaus right. or Merciful Fate or whatever, you know, yeah. like that gave you all these ideas. You, you know, you don't want to give them credit. You want to be the author of your own success. That's and when it starts patting you on the back and... Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, but it's fine, yeah. You're very introspective in that regard. Like you, you have a very um, uh, well, failure. Would, failure would do that to you. Is that what, <laughs> but you say failure though. But you still have massive amounts of fans. You're still deeply yeah, respected. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm weird in that I've always been willing to talk about the process, which again is anti gimmick. But it also, um, uh, I I've always approached it more like a performance artist in that I'm after the bigger message of how work intersects with fame intersects with personal feeling intersects with personality and 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 how people perceive things like i like all that weird andy kaufman uncomfortability mm. that's part of my attraction right. so i've been willing to use myself as the battering ram which is how i end up becoming a meme <laughs> right because people people latch on to these personalities i've created which of course are, are ancillary to my real personality Right. But they don't they don't necessarily want to give me credit that I'm a sort of controller of the forces at play. So if I say something dumb, people assume that I'm dumb. It's hard for them to assume that I'm saying something dumb on purpose because I want a reaction. I just had to share that little giblet with you. I was uh, listening or watching on YouTube. You can see a lot of these interviews between... Joe Rogan and other folks and he was on there with Billy Corgan Billy Corgan actually went to we went to the same high school he was several years ahead of me so I didn't I wasn't at the same high school with him it's called Glenbard North High School Glenbard North High School out there in Carroll Stream Carroll Stream Illinois near Chicago I don't know what town he lived in Eddie Vedder lived in Evanston from what I understand which is also in Illinois. So I had to share that because he's talking about the process of creation, which I talked about. He brings up Jimi Hendrix, which we had a podcast about. I'm always talking about the process of creation. That's pretty much what this whole podcast revolves around. Jimi Hendrix, I did it at that podcast about Jimi Hendrix. He also brought up Andy Kaufman, which is just phenomenal. So of course I had to include that. Uh, by the way, some of you know, some of you already know, some of you have heard so far already on the podcast, the latest sensation that's sweeping the nation, we call it Inspirado Comunicado, sometimes it's referred to as Inspirado Participado, other times, it's simply called the Inspirato Hotline. And that phone number is 561-203-9179-er. 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 <laughs> so, call in. Leave a message. And... <clears throat> I'll I'll include it on the podcast. I'll do it. It's a great way to participate. And now they're visiting me. 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 And now they're visiting me.